hanging out, popping out content today. Nothing else to do, you know, rainy, cold. We got an Arctic front cold coming through. Hopefully the power stays on this time. Anyways, I'm talking loud because the, eh, whatever. Hey, check out this drum. It's pretty cool. It's a Moperk. It's really heavy. I got it from my buddy Frank on a third trade. It's like a one trade, two trade, three trade deal. Or a purchase, a trade, and then another trade. Uh, and I got it with the JCR Bell. It sounds really good, too. He got his SOS. I got my Moperk. This drum is from 1998. It weighs like 32 pounds. Have you ever picked up a 32-pound mahogany quinto? Well, I got one right here. I put a super thick skin on it. Um, another one of my favorite skins from my buddy Harold. He sent me like, I bought a set of drums from him, and he sent me three skins for quintos. I got one on here. I got one here. I think one I may have gifted away. Uh, I can't remember. Anyways, you know, we just doing it. Retirement, hey, ain't so bad. But uh, this drum is is um, going to sound better over time. It hasn't gotten to its full potential yet, but I think it's going to sound really good. And if it doesn't after six months, I'll figure something out. But here it is tuned really low. So you can hear the thickness of the skin. One thing I like about a thick skin is it allows for a lot of definition between the open tone and your slap. Slaps are really clean and tight. Bam. All right. So let's spin her around a couple times. This drum tunes really well. Again, if you're just seeing this, I like to wax the bearing edge. I like to wax the hoop. And I like to wax anywhere the skin touches metal or wood. It really helps the drum settle in. And then it slides around instead of getting cricky and cracky. So you know when you get those skins are like, click, crack, click, crack. Um, these won't do that if you tuck them nice, uh, and it's a good skin too. So I'm going to go ahead and really give this a good pop a couple times around. It's a six lugger, 10 inch. You can see how easily it turns, even with that thick skin. All right, let's see what happens with two spins. Coming up. And something interesting about this drum... You can hear it's not fully resonant yet, but that's not the pitch you'd play it at anyways. But you can hear that slap, that closed slap really starting to develop. And it's tight, real crisp and tight. And somebody commented like, you know, you don't want a thick skin on a quinto because you're going to be playing rumba all night. You're going to be slamming on it. Um, and you're playing over other drummers and everybody's loud and dancing while I'm, you know, they don't have a lot of rumbles in Houston, and I'm not invited anyways. Now you hear it coming out, right? The clean, clear tone. This thing will go up and keep going up until it chokes. But it's a very heavy drum, so I really don't anticipate it choking up too much. We'll give another couple one, one more time around here, and then we'll take a listen to see what it sounds like. I'm trying to get a lot of recording done today because I got the mic set pretty nice. I'm always fiddling with them, trying to get the right sound. I'm not a recording guy. Ah, now we are. Yeah, now she's coming alive. stretch out over time, sweat on it, take it outside, grease it up a couple more times, and probably four to six months down the road, it should be screaming. If it's not by then, then it's the wrong skin. I realize a lot of people don't have the luxury to wait four to six months, but you know, I'm retired. <laughs> 25 years in public schools, baby. Principaling. I'll tell you some stories. All in the hood. Now you hear. It's really 
lighten up the overdose meter there too. And I've got it the same setting that I had all of these other drums. It means a screaming. Let me hear it next to Pablo here just to get a side by side comparison. See if I can get them at the same pitch. This one's probably a little bit lower. See, the skins are about the same thing. This is a different type of skin, though. This one is a lot greasier. It's also been on there longer. Let's see what happens on this power with my cranker. Yeah. You gotta have a good sturdy drum if you're gonna put a skin that thick on it. Don't try this on a gombot, please. Please do not do this to a gombot. <laughs> or a precious drum you just don't wanna mess with. All right, so there's that Pablo. And here is the Moperk. So you can see the Pablo's got a little bit more life to it. I'm not too sure about this skin yet, but like I said, it was a gift. I'm going to try it. If it don't work, no problem. I got some other ones. Put a little thinner skin on there, maybe. Sucker hurt your hands, man. So I'm still not sure if it's a skin for this drum, but we're going to let it break in. We're going to pound on it. It'll thin out a little bit around this area. And I think it'll set in really nice if by, you know, I'll know by springtime. Uh, if it's going to work or not. But hey, there you have it. A couple thick skin king toes, heavy drums, good solid drums, great sound drums. Again, thick is not always better. It's a preference. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Obviously, like somebody said, you know, if you're playing that sucker all night, you don't want to skin that thick. That's true. But if you're just hanging out, using it for recording or the occasional backyard Roomba or just messing around late at night, works just fine. And I like it. And I think when you see three months later, I'll come do another demo of this drum. And you see how it's going to break in. It's really going to come to life. 